leaving ancient Masada. It was a real thrill to see it again. Rachel's birthday has another few hours to run. And we traveled north to Tiberias in the Galilee for a birthday dinner that's going to make a memory. It's my birthday today, and we are celebrating by eating at the Bruna restaurant in Galilee. Local fair, eggplant, hummus, plenty of delicious side dishes. pita bread and salad. It looked so good we were all taking pictures and it tasted great too. Main courses were steak, lamb and kebab. And of course, no Galilee meal is complete without St. Peter's fish, the tilapia, dessert to finish. It's a bless from the Bible. Ah. If somebody told you, Admir yeah. So when your when birthday, birthday, so they, they, they wish you going to live at the age, age of 120 years. And this ah. is a bless. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Nate had booked us an Airbnb overlooking Galilee, and the location was great. A nice balcony on which to have breakfast and coffee, and the beautiful Mediterranean weather continued to impress. The Biblical Sea of Galilee reminding us of so many familiar stories, though we did have some problems with the place, and headed into Tiberias as my good friends at the Rom Beach Hotel had offered us a deal we couldn't refuse. Believe it or not, I've stayed here several times, and it is without doubt my favorite hotel in the whole world. I've known the owners for years and we were given a suite overlooking Galilee that included the best breakfast in Israel, the best view in Israel and one of the best evening meals to boot. If you visit Israel, don't miss staying here. After a day exploring, there's nothing like a dip in the pool overlooking the lake and a relaxing evening. Thank you. We didn't have Wi-Fi connection, now we do. Rachel got a FaceTime happy birthday, free Wi-Fi here. The sun comes up over those Golan Heights in the distance. A tourist boat sails past. If you're a Christian, it's a wonderful experience to sail on Galilee, following Jesus' footsteps, if that's the word. The scenery has changed little in 2,000 years. When I edit a film and show extensive shots from the hotel window, you can be sure we had a great view. Time to explore. We're very close to many places mentioned in the New Testament, and we want to visit some of these places. We're driving north along the shores of Tiberias. First stop, Tabga. The place where the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 is said to have taken place. The site's name comes from the Greek, Hectopagon, Seven Springs. It's a striking place, 
very peaceful. Maintained by Benedictine monks, they certainly have created a beautiful place for pilgrims to meditate, to imagine, to wonder. The peacock is an ancient Christian symbol of eternal life. Rachel was on camera too, so we were getting great shots. It was indeed a place just to soak in the peaceful atmosphere. A big thank you to the Benedictine monks. Next stop is perhaps the most well-known site in Galilee, Capernaum, the town that Jesus made the base for his ministry. It's the home of Peter, Andrew, James and John, and the ruins of Peter's house are still visible. Matthew was also born here. It's not surprising that nowadays it's a popular place of pilgrimage. It's a remarkable archaeological site in that it's been very well preserved. This artifact, believed to depict the cart that carried the Ark of the Covenant. The remains of village houses are still here. ancient streets where Jesus walked, where he lived, and where many miracles were done. It was not a small town, 1,500 people lived here. This is Peter's house, where the paralyzed man was let down through the roof, writing on the walls, indicating it was later used as a church. Now a building sits over the site. They call it a church, but it's surely a viewing platform with windows all around and a glass floor to see down. I have to say, I felt the modern building ruined the ruins. If ruins can be ruined, that is. This is the limestone synagogue built in the 3rd or 4th centuries over the site of the ancient one built of basalt stone, parts of which can still be seen. It is not the actual synagogue that was there at the time of Jesus. It's built upon the site of it. This is a drawing of what it would have looked like. Remarkable for a village of only 1,500 people. Stone benches were set along the eastern and western aisles. An interesting fact that even Michael Caine doesn't know 
is that Capernaum is used as an English word meaning a shambles. Don't ask me how I know. Some things are not even on Google. Outside, a statue of Peter. We've just been able to visit Capernaum, uh, the home of Peter and some of the other disciples and where, where they were called. And we have seen the house where he lived and we've seen the synagogue that Jesus would have visited, well, built on that synagogue, a third, 34th century new synagogue, and uh, see artifacts too from uh, those times. Our exploration now continues with a visit to the Mount of Beatitudes.